Friday's second video for you with breaking news is from Voldia city of the Amhara region where headquarters of uh, East Amhara Fano has been uh, seized by government forces Ethiopian National Defense Force has taken control of uh, the headquarters of uh, East Amhara Fano. Second new story is about uh, another Ethiopian journalist who has been arrested yesterday. Five journalists of Ashara Media and Eagle Media were detained and today another was arrested. Thirdly, we have some updates about ongoing operation against Romo Liberation Army. People say, Sajid, you are not covering uh, this operation. Yes, I am covering it, but in Amhara region now we are seeing that uh, uh, a military campaign against Fano has started. So there are several updates. We have to uh, cover all of them. Now we have two updates about the operation against Romo Liberation Army. And lastly, viewers, uh, some civil society organizations have written a letter to UN about uh, Tigray. There could be genocide in Tigray like it was in Rwanda in 1994. Uh, an article is also being shared, written uh, for an international news source. Uh, what would be the impact of this letter written by these 15 uh, organizations? Will it have any impact? Uh, will UN do something? And who are these uh, civil side organizations? Firstly, uh, first new story is from Vuldia. Yilkal Kifale Amhar region's president has made it clear that this operation will continue because it's a law enforcement operation. Amhara activists, uh, some Amhara groups, Amhara parties say this operation is to weaken Amhara people. But Yilkal Kifale once again today through state media said in a statement that the operation would continue because it's a law enforcement operation. By the way, was when Ethiopian and Eritrean forces, regional forces, launched a military offensive on Tigray in November 2020. Back then, it was said that it was a law enforcement operation. That law enforcement operation turned into a disaster and you saw what happened. Then more than a month ago, operation against Oromo Liberation Army was launched. Again, it was said it was a law enforcement operation. Now, this third law enforcement operation is underway uh, against uh, not only Fano, but uh, uh, other uh, sections, uh, individuals are also being targeted who are speaking against this operation. Uh, stories from Vuldia viewers. So we know that East Amhara Fano is relatively newly established Fano faction. Fano was mainly in Gojam and Gondar before the start of uh, uh, Tigray's military offensive on uh, Amhara last year. Main Fano commanders, they were from Gondar, Gondar and Gojam, Masrisha, Mesafint, uh, uh, and uh, the Minakasi others. East Amhara Fano is relatively newly established. We heard of its leaders uh, in recent months. Mehret Vodaju is leading East Amhara Fano. East Amhara Fano means that the North Wallo, South Wallo, uh, both regions, uh, Fanos are under this uh, group, East Amhara Fano. Its headquarters was at uh, Adago Square. Adago Square is in uh, Voldia uh, uh, city. Here, Ethiopian National Defense Force uh, since yesterday and police uh, have been trying to take control of this uh, camp of East Amhara Fano. 
there was some resistance as well. Yesterday we heard of some uh, protests in Voldia. But just a few minutes ago, we received this confirmation that Ethiopian National Defense Force and police, they have seized control of uh, Fano's camp at uh, this square uh, called Adago Square, which is in Voldia city. East Amara Fano in a statement has also confirmed that its base, its headquarter has been seized by government forces. East Amara Fano in the statement says that it is still fighting on Raya and other fronts and dozens of its members died and they were injured during uh, uh, the fighting last year and now government is taking action, government is victimizing the people the members of Fano group. East Amhara Fano is calling for reconciliation for talks, but uh, government uh, wants action, government wants to dismantle Fano, it seems, that it wants to uh, bring Fano under tight government control. That is why uh, this uh, main headquarter of East Amhara Fano it has been seized by government forces in Voldia. You can see some pictures on your screen. The picture from Voldia city, there was some unrest there. A helicopter can also be seen flying over Voldia city. Uh, ENDF and uh, regional forces then control of uh, Fano headquarter in Voldia now. Second new story is about another Ethiopian journalist who has been arrested. Almost on a daily basis, we are reporting about journalists being arrested or released. If the journalist is Solomon Shumaye viewers, Solomon Shumye, Shumye, Solomon Shumye is uh, uh, a journalist, he was running a YouTube channel by the name of uh, Gabe Giano. Uh, his house was raided and unfortunately, uh, it shouldn't have happened. His sister was arrested just because she was sister of uh, Solomon Shumye. She was taken to a police station. Uh, ultimately, Solomon Shumye uh, had to go to the police station then his sister was released and Solomon was arrested. That is what's happening, that family members are not being spared. They are being arrested too. Th that shouldn't happen. Viewers. If the journalist has done something wrong, he should be detained, arrested. But his family should not be harassed. Women should be respected. But that's what's happening in uh, Amha region in Risababa. A third new story is about uh, the ongoing military operation, I guess, Oromo Liberation Army. Two updates for you. First update is uh, a statement shared by some OLA-backed news sources. They say that 34 members of Ethiopian National Defense Force have defected and they have joined Oromo Liberation Army. It happened in East Valaga zone. Uh, Gobo Sayo Voreda, Ano City, on Gobo Kabele. Here, uh, OLA backed sources say that uh, 34 government soldiers have defected and they've joined OLA. So far, no pictures, no videos have been shared by OLA from this place. On the other hand, government media today once again showed some OLA fighters, allegedly OLA fighters. Government media says that 26 OLA members surrendered today. Uh, they were shown on the state media. It happened in Horo Gdoro, again western part of Romia. So from western part, we are receiving conflicting reports. The government says that OLA members are surrendering in Horogodoro, in Valaga. Uh, OLA says that ENDF members are joining OLA. But government has at least shared a video. And OLA has not shared any picture video so far. Watch this clip shared by government backed news sources showing OLA members, allegedly OLA members, who have surrendered in Horogodoro. Watch the clip, then last news story. 
Kodin horo guduru wala ga ana abe don goro timi sen sot ni shani dig demi jahit an nusani walin karana gati narka ken natan. Zira totni ani chas isan si ma chun na genya wara na nusani ego akata dan da an rati mari atani ten jur. Mi sen sot ni shani wa mi cha aboti gada fi man gudu ta biyad aga udan harka ken natanis umat oromu di fama gafa tani ten jur. Hojin ke nya kan kanadura wa kamo li gala tu do gora ta usa aga rera di hono gora anjara na mayu. Oromon kawa jama ature gada tim bula sabuna da ture ke sati salpate. Salah satu kunci kanitin uve unu tini. Karena nu otomo begini, karena ambod de hormon hafesun sabu nu masa bare, enyu masa bare. Kamu saya egu wajini tin hajarat uje. Lastly, viewers, 15 civil society organizations have written a letter to UN. They want action. They say that uh, there is looming danger of genocide in Ethiopia against Tigrayans uh, and. UN must intervene. They say that uh, the indicators show that what happened in uh, Rwanda in 1994 could happen in Ethiopia as well. Like uh, hate speech was prevalent back then in uh, Rwanda. It is being seen in Ethiopia these days as well. Uh, food aid is being denied. Uh, then sexual violence is being reported. Uh, these organizations refer to Amnesty and uh, HRW's report as well that uh, atrocities were committed against Tigrayans in Western Tigray. And they say that Tigrayan forces also, uh, they're involved in destruction in uh, Amhara and Afar region. So these organizations are urging UN Security Council to intervene. What do they want? They say, firstly, that Tigray, Ethiopia should be on the agenda of UN Security Council. UN should monitor the situation on the ground in Ethiopia. Uh, independent investigations should be held. In Western Tigray, Humera Volkaya Sagadev, African Union led peacekeeping force should be deployed. And uh, aid delivery to Tigray must be ensured other parts as well unhindered unfettered and uh, lastly they say that uh, uh, there must be withdrawal of uh, uh, Eritrean army from Tigray. Now your problem is that UN is paralyzed. UN is split. Your security council. It happens in almost all uh, conflicts that UN is unable to take uh, decisions because there are two camps, Russia, China on one side and uh, the other camp with uh, US and other uh, permanent Security Council members. I don't know from where these 15 civil society organizations have come. Are they influential? Do they have any influence? Uh, because in East Africa, civil society does not hold any power uh, in Ethiopia, in Eritrea, in uh, Somalia, in Sudan they have state power, uh, civil society, but in other countries we are seeing what, what is happening, in Uganda as well. So this latter, my assessment is that it's not going to have any effect. It's just internationalizing the issue, which it already is. The issue was internationalized by Tigray mostly. But after the start of Ukraine-Russia conflict, uh, the world's focus is on that conflict. And secondly, in Tigray-Ethiopia conflict, things are moving uh, positively as well to some extent, not completely, that uh, truce was announced and delivery of A to Tigray started. So though speed is very slow and there is fear that uh, uh, tens of thousands could die in, in, in hunger in uh, Tigray. But still something, some progress is being seen. 